Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about some really intriguing discoveries coming from within Saturn. And more specifically, we're actually going to be talking about this brilliant paper that found a way to analyze the insides of Saturn by using the observations from the rings themselves. Something that the scientists refer to as ring seismology. Or more specifically, by observing the actual vibrations and changes in the rings of Saturn, the scientists were able to determine what's inside of the planet. Which sounds really, really cool and also answers the question of whether you can study a planet by just looking at its rings. Although they weren't just looking at all of the rings, because there are actually quite a lot of rings of Saturn that you can technically look at. They were really specifically looking at the inner rings. And to be more exact, they were looking at what's known as the C ring that you're about to see right here. This is one of the closest rings of Saturn, and this is the one that would generally experience the most disturbances and the most effects based on what happens inside the planet. But how can we possibly learn about the structure of the planet by looking at what happens around the rings? Well, in some sense, we kind of do this all the time with planet Earth and even our own star, the Sun. So, for example, when earthquakes happen on the planet, all of these different waves that propagate through the planet allow the scientists to precisely measure the structures inside our planet by detecting differences between the velocities of different waves as they move through the entire planet. Similarly, by studying what happens on the surface of the Sun and identifying specific seismological activities, the scientists studying the field known as helioseismology can generally determine what happens inside our Sun as well. This is exactly how we know, for example, where the nuclear reaction takes place and what happens in some of the regions of the Sun itself. But by observing different types of wave effects and different types of activities in the rings, likewise we can also determine what sort of an internal structure is causing these various waves to appear in these rings. Or in common terms, we can basically discover what's inside Saturn. And so just like the earthquakes that happen on the planet and the sunquakes that happen inside the Sun, Saturn also experiences its own version of Saturn quakes, although unlike earthquakes, they're basically just oscillations of a lot of mass sort of moving back and forth. But generally, these oscillations will actually produce gravitational effects that will start moving around anywhere from the surface up to the point where they start affecting the rings as well. Mostly because the planet is really, really massive, but also because the rings are really close and also have very, very specific, very orderly shapes that can be easily disturbed by even minute changes in gravity. And so by analyzing various disturbances in the C-ring, the scientists behind this paper discovered some unusual features that, to some extent, actually contradict some of the previous discoveries or assumptions. It's in regards to the core of Saturn, which also means that one of my previous videos made a few years ago was also to some extent maybe incorrect, assuming of course that the scientists in this paper are onto something. So if you were to look in any textbook, you would probably see a picture of Saturn that resembles something like this. There is a solid core in the middle, there is some sort of layer of metallic hydrogen that produces all of the magnetic effects, there is a layer of helium rain, and then there is also the upper layer where a lot of hydrogen and helium are present as well. Or in other words, every layer and every structure inside Saturn seems to be quite established and have a very specific boundary. But what the scientists in this paper discovered based on the ring observations is that it doesn't look like the core itself is just a lump or chunk of solid matter. Because when comparing their data with the data from the Cassini probe that studied Saturn for many years, they discovered that the core seems to be a lot more diffuse and doesn't really have these very specific boundaries. It seems to be not just a piece of rock or a piece of metal, it seems to be a mixture of rock and a lot of gases as well. While at the same time being much, much larger, it very likely spreads across approximately 70,000 kilometers, which represents roughly around 60% of the planet's diameter. I know that the rocky material and the ice material here is very likely about 17 masses of planet Earth. It seems that the core itself, if you were to combine it with all of the gases, is roughly around 55 masses of planet Earth. Which means that it's much larger and much more massive than we ever thought was possible. And by the way, that's more than half of the mass of Saturn. The total mass of Saturn is around 95 masses of Earth. And if this discovery is correct, this also implies that there's a big chance that other gas giants and other ice giants like Neptune, Uranus and Jupiter might also have something similar happening on the inside. 
because their rings are much smaller and a lot more difficult to see, it's actually going to be very difficult to determine if this is true. But more importantly, what this actually shows us is how Saturn and probably a lot of other gas giants were formed originally. And this also sort of tells us that maybe we were slightly wrong about how certain planets form in the early star system in general. So our belief right now is that generally when a gas giant forms, it starts with a solid core, kind of like how Earth was forming as well. All of these larger cores, as they become bigger and bigger, they eventually start attracting gas. And with time, more and more gas gets gathered around the planet, turning it into a gas giant. Now, all of this is obviously based on some of the observations from the other star systems, especially ones that are still developing planets. But because we don't really get to see the details of this activity, it's still not entirely clear how the gas giants become gas giants. And so the arrival of gases generally was believed to be sort of a later phenomenon. In this case, on, uh, for example, Saturn and Jupiter, they become so squeezed by pressure that they turn into liquids, whereas on Earth they remain as gases and sometimes evaporate, but sometimes become part of the atmosphere. There are, however, some of the newer theories that suggest something different happens. They suggest that all of this happens all at once. Gases, metals, and rocky materials all start to kind of combine together into larger and larger chunks. And with time, they do get to differentiate just a little bit with some of the heavier metals and heavier materials sinking to the bottom. But overall, even after billions of years, the planet does remain a little bit more diffuse than having very defined specific boundaries. And so in this case, the core represents the oldest material, with the upper layers representing slightly younger material. And even though the center of Saturn has the most rock and ice in general, it still has some gas there as well. And the proportion of gas increases as you move to the outskirts of the planet. But unlike in previous models, like I mentioned before, this doesn't seem to be a very abrupt phenomenon. This is more of a gradual and very diffuse process, which of course means that this image where the core itself is represented as a kind of a chunk of rock and ice is most likely incorrect. It's diffuse, it's spread out across a very large area, and it also seems to be stable. It doesn't seem to emit a lot of heat, and actually seems to maintain a lot of heat, which would also explain why Saturn in general seems to be way hotter than it should be. The planet in this case does emit a lot more heat from the inside than it absorbs from the sun. And so this is definitely an extremely interesting analysis and one of the more interesting observations in regards to what is probably happening inside Saturn. It obviously explains some things, but doesn't really explain other things. One thing it doesn't explain is why is it that Saturn's magnetosphere seems to be so perfectly aligned to the rotation of the planet, which is extremely different from what happens on Earth, and especially different from what happens on ice giants like Neptune and Uranus, where the magnetosphere is extremely unusual. And there's no real answer to this question just yet, but this other paper managed to analyze this using supercomputers and determined that one of the main reasons why Saturn might be so symmetrical and have such an unusually perfect magnetosphere is really because of this next layer after the core, the layer that we refer to as the helium rain. And because this layer of helium rain seems to be spread across the entire planet and seems to play a role in distributing heat on the planet, the scientists discover that there is a little bit more heat on the equator compared to some of the polar regions, and this heat distribution seems to create various effects that result in very specific motion of the layer responsible for creating the magnetosphere, which then results in having magnetosphere that's very proportional and very symmetrical. Which of course means that we now have a slightly different representation of what probably happens inside Saturn. So first of all, forget about this core and forget about this other layer, all of this is very likely just one sort of diffuse chunk of gas, solid, and ices. Then we have this relatively thick but also relatively symmetrical layer known as the helium layer. Then somewhere above that is most likely the metallic hydrogen layer that produces the magnetosphere. Above that, there is a very symmetrical layer of helium rain. This is essentially where helium precipitates, rains down, and distributes a lot of the heat across the entire planet. And then above that we have the hydrogen and helium. Although because of these particular discoveries, it is a little bit difficult to try to imagine, for example, where the metallic hydrogen layer is located. It's very likely below the helium rain layer, but where is it in comparison to the diffuse core? Is it part of the core? Is the core to some extent responsible for creating the magnetosphere? So definitely still a lot of questions to answer and still a lot of things to discover.
For now though, what's important is the technique itself. The scientists found a really interesting way of analyzing the core and analyzing what happens inside the planet. Which of course means that there are going to be a lot more studies, a lot more follow-ups, trying to find out what really happens inside Saturn and inside other gas giants. But I guess one of the more important parts coming out of this paper is that we might need to reassess our current models on how planets form. Because if this paper is correct, the planetary formation might be a little bit different from how we originally imagined it. All of the gases, all of the rocky materials and all of the ices might actually mix all together all at once forming these diffuse mixed cores as opposed to having very specific regions like we normally imagine them. And so this is something that we'll probably follow up with another video once more data is available. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.